Welcome back to Skyrim. I am Mental Fox, and I thank you for joining me again. We are outside of a little place here called Pine Moon Cave. We cleared out the leader of that cave in the last episode. There's another thing, another quest given to us. Uh, this one, uh, I guess it was actually S Sybil um, in uh, back at uh, Solitude who gave us this little quest here. She wanted us to take that, take out the leader there. So, uh, we find ourselves, again, uh, <laughs> pretty much maxed out with carry weight. So, I need to uh, make plans um, to get back to a place where I could sell some stuff off. And my choices are... Uh, hmm, that's weird, I don't, I don't remember Dragon Bridge. But we could go back to Solitude over here. Or... Man. Um... Karth Wasted probably isn't going to have anything, and ne neither is Dragon... That's so weird. I don't remember Dragon Bridge at all. <laughs> I don't remember if there's any shops there. Um, it's just a little town, you know? So I can't imagine there's, like, a whole lot there. So I'm thinking of actually heading in this direction back towards Solitude. We do we do have reasons to go back to Solitude. Um, you know, we have a couple, couple of quests, like this one here, to uh, finish off. So I think that's what I'm going to do, and on our way there... Uh, there's going to be more things to see, like there's an icon right here on my compass. So we'll just walk back towards uh, Solitude and uh, just explore what there is to explore along the way. And then when we make it back to Solitude, I'll be able to sell my stuff off and then we could do uh, more adventuring. So this is really pretty right here. Just a little body of water with a little island in the middle of it. Clear Pine Pond. Don't know what the significance of this pond is, why it needs to be, you know, marked on the map, but there she is. Take a little look around, but we're not going to spend much time here. As usual, I'll mark this Put this uh, on my list. Ooh, there's an alchemist here. Okay. Hmm. She's got a satchel. There's a little basket here. What's up? She's got the De Rerum Darenis book that we read earlier. She's got an enchanter's potion. Items enchanted are 10% stronger for 60 seconds. She's got some urn root and some robes. Um... And, you know, being just nearly over encumbered, I'm going to leave this stuff here. I and mean, I guess the potion isn't too bad to get. But the rest of the stuff, I don't know. I mean, I guess if I really wanted to do some... Whoa, 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 whoa. Yikes. Whoa. Get away from me. Oh, she's still fighting over here. I did not care for that at all. That was scary. Those big hands in my face. Yikes. Yikes. Scary. So, anyway. I mean, I don't see Spriggan. What? You're still, are you still fighting? Whoa, it's... Uh, Janessa, it's okay. They're dead. Oh, actually, they're not. There's two more of something over there, according to my compass, even though I don't see anything. Um... But yeah, this uh, Spriggan here. Yeah, now I am over and covered. Oh, is there an yet another Spriggan over here? Wow. So yeah, now I am over and covered. I need... Um, crap, I'm not going to be able to trade with uh, Janassa while she's freaking out about this enemy that I can't see over there. Janassa, it's okay. Janassa. Janassa, it's fine. Stand down. Yeah, she's, um, she is in battle mode, and I don't think there's anything I could do about it. So, for now, we'll just hobble back over here to the freaking alchemist, and, um, we'll just drop some stuff off here, just to make a little bit of room, um, Okay, let's go finish these two off over here, wherever they are. 
I don't think it's the elk. You know what? It's weird. The, the elk is showing up as an enemy. And that little uh, fox that just ran away is showing up as an enemy. So, I don't know. Maybe they are allies of the, um, the Spriggan. But, so long as they're standing around here, I don't know if I could get uh, Janassa to calm down long enough to trade with her. Janassa, it's okay. Well, this stupid elk and this fox are just going to hang out here looking at me, aren't they? Are you going to fight me? Huh? What are you going to do about it? Let's see if Janessa fights the fox. Let's see. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. <laughs> she took out the fox, man. You want the... You want that elk too, Janessa? Come on. You going to fight me, elk? Hmm? Huh? You going to fight me? Come on, fight me, bro. Janessa, get him. Janessa, get him. Get that elk. Go get him. Come on, Janessa. Go get him. Come on. You're so freaked out about it. <laughs> uh, okay, are you happy now, Janessa? You calm down. She got a little bit of bloodlust there. All right. Uh, anyway, um, what I could do is give some stuff to Janessa. Same kind, you and I. I'm glad to have met. If that is what you wish. So we could just give her some heavy stuff. This and this and this and this and these and this and this. Why am I carrying that? And this and um, even the rueful axe. Nope, we can't. She. Oh, it's a quest item. I can't remove it. Boy, she. Um, it sure does seem like... Oh, she put that mask on. She sure does carry a lot of stuff. Holy crap, she carries a lot of stuff. My goodness, she is strong. Lead on, then. Okay, now she's wearing that creepy mask. Uh, I want this stuff. I, you know, I mean, it's... It's worth a lot. Just don't... You just don't leave that kind of thing behind, man. Well, anyway. Um... There's an alchemist here. And there's a satchel here. With a bee, blue dart wing, and nightshade in it. And, um... Oh, well, that was some interest. I didn't know Taproot looked like that. So, I guess we could guess that this alchemist was just here picking flowers and such, uh, herbs, um, for her alchemy, and perhaps she was attacked by these spriggans and died. That's the story I'm making up in my head. In this direction... There is a uh, Stormcloak camp. And I wonder if they're going to be hostile toward me. Remember a couple episodes ago, we uh, ran into some Stormcloaks and they were like, Hey buddy, back off. So I don't know if they're going to be hostile towards me here or not. I hope they're not because I could... There's probably... You know, I mean, there's probably going to be... Um, ah, crap. I think I told Janassa to wait. Um... There she stands. But yeah, there could, there might be a quartermaster. No? Something. Come on, follow me, Janassa. What are you doing? Come on, I know you can swim. I've seen you do it. But yeah, maybe we could sell some stuff to this quartermaster. If they're not hostile towards us. Getting real sick of waiting on you. She's still in the water. What are you doing? Come here. What do you... What? Hey, do I need to push you? Let's go. Hey, you. Oh, oh. Oh, hey. Whoa, Janessa, I had no idea. What? Lead on, then. Will do. Okay. That it? At least we got out of the water. Okay, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, I'm gonna t you're telling me let's go? Let's go. Problem is, I need to figure out how to get around these mountains so that she'll come with me. So we can get to this camp, which is right over here. Well. Okay, maybe this will work. Yeah, right. 
Janessa. Whatever. She'll catch up with us eventually. Hopefully. Ooh. An actual bear. Fireball to the face. Ouch. Oh, I was kind of hoping Janassa would come running in. Well, at least I was able to dump off a bunch of stuff before we lost her. We'll see her again. I didn't realize that this camp was going to be this far out of the way. Wherever the hell it is. Ooh. Ooh. Come on here, cultists. Whoa. Oh, there's Janessa. He's got a uh, ward up. Oh, 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 I'm just about ready to die. Let's fix that right now. Damn it. You are annoying. There. Die, mofo. What do you got? Uh, robes are worth an awful lot. Uh, spell tone, we could sell that. Janessa's still over there fighting that guy. She can take care of herself, man. Yeah, she can. Look at that. Knocks him down. Haha. <laughs> Stupid cultist. Good job, Janessa. Good to see you again. Even <laughs> with that ugly mask on. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can't find this freaking camp. I still don't see it. Oh crap, she's not gonna follow me down here. Hoffengar Stormcloak Camp Discovered. Yeah, let's see, are they gonna be hostile toward me? I sure hope not. Hey buddy, how's it going? If you know any true sons nope, and daughters she's good. of Skyrim, tell them to head to Windhelm. Ulfric Stormcloak wants to see them. Okay, let's see if there's somebody here maybe we could sell some stuff to. Talos Gaetio. What about you, Quartermaster? What do you need? Well, I was kind of hoping I could sell some stuff to you. Of course, now that I gave all my stuff to Janassa. Um, I could sell some pelts. I mean, yeah, whatever. Sell, sell, pelts, pelts. And <laughs> like I said, I just gave all my stuff to Janassa. Uh, let's... Great, yeah. Now now I have no idea where Janassa is or how long it's going to take her to get here. So... Hey, hey there you are. Hmm. <laughs> She's a little fed up with me. If that is what you wish. Alright, give me, give me some stuff to sell. Let's sell some heavy stuff. I'll sell the glass battle axe because I don't need that. The glass mace of despair. See, that's the kind of thing that I want to see if I could disenchant. Uh, oh, apparently she's decided to use the Ebony War Axe, but I don't really think that's her forte. So I'll be selling that. These Dragon Bones, I don't know if this guy's going to buy that. The Galder Black Blade, I, Blade, I like it when she uses that. Okay, we got a Glass Bow of Despair here. Ancient Nord Bow, I don't even know why I picked that up. Let's see how this goes. Lead on, then. Take a look. Glass Battle Axe, we'll sell that. The Ebony War Axe, we'll sell that. Ancient Nard Bow. It's pretty good. It's not too bad. It's price she is buying that much stuff from us, actually. If that is what you wish. Um we could sell, well, I don't know if she'll buy this or not. We know she buys pelts, we could sell those. 
She might buy this stuff. So what bow is she going to use here? She's got an Orca shock bow. I think that's what I gave her. Pretty sure it is. Oh, she's going to use this. Ah, oh, crap. As long as she's holding on to that, she's going to use that instead. And apparently I need to give her some arrows. We'll give her uh, a whole bunch of these iron arrows. There. Now she has some arrows. Let's go. I long to be out there with my brothers. Mm -hmm. waging war yeah, shut up. Oh. Okay. I want to talk to you. Shut up. What do you need? So, horn armor, vampire armor. I hope she only has 52 gold now. Is she anything I'm interested in buying from her? She has some ingots. Maybe I should get some ebony ingots. You know? I don't know. Do I need refined moonstone and moonstone ore for anything? I don't know. Maybe. God, she has a lot of money now. We'll sell her um, these and... We will also sell her some vampire armors. And, you know, gosh, I'm still at 300, though. Still carrying a lot of stuff. But, um, yeah, for now, I guess that's all I'm going to sell to her. See, maybe there's not an arcane enchanter here. And, uh, at least I don't think there's one here. Who's this guy? Damn faithless Imperials. We'll show those faithless dogs who this land belongs to. Yep, we've probably already heard everything he has to say. So yeah, I guess there's not an arcane enchanter here. I wish there was, because then I could maybe see if I could disenchant these uh, weapons I've got. But the truth is, is that she has two things of mm. despair. And um, if that is what they do wish. the same thing, right? So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this from her. I don't want her to use it. I want her to use the Black Blade. That's what I want her to use. Let's go. Keep your eyes open. Take a look. Mm -hmm. All right. One more thing here. Sell the Glass Mace of Despair. Okay. That's pretty good. All right. I'm surprised at how much stuff she bought from us, to tell you the truth. But we are... Golly, this direction? Man, I am all turned around. Huh. Okay, this is the way back to Solitude. So we're just going to walk this way. I don't know if we're going to see anything else show up on our map. We probably kind of already walked this way, but... I'll turn my head from side to side occasionally to see if anything pops up on my compass. Any place we haven't visited yet. But um, it'll be nice to go back to Solitude to uh, clear off some of these quests. This is, I guess, the little mill here. Who, uh... I feel like I've been here before. I was wondering if um, if I picked these plants and then sold them to the farmer here, if that would count as helping the people. Here for work? Get an axe. And oh, okay. Bring me all the wood you can chop. Okay, let's do that. Let's chop some wood for this guy. Oh, I need a woodcutter's axe. <sighs> Where? Dude, don't you have an axe I can use? Isn't there like an axe laying around here that I could use? Good grief. Really, there's no axe around all this chopped wood. Oh, here we go. You wield Azura Star? Oh. How, how can such a thing be possible? Oh, that's kind of neat. I haven't heard anybody say that before. Alright, let's chop some wood for this guy. Hmm. You thought mining was fun. Where do you see this? Oh, achievement unlocked. Hard worker. 
Oh, that's nice. Nicely done, dude. So we got some firewood. There. Two firewood. Now let's see if I can go find this guy. No, don't go in the house. Hey, you. We had some trouble a while back. Oh, no. Stormcloak tried to set the mill on fire. What? But we sorted her out. Look at his eye. Look at that. Honest gold for honest work. Okay, All firewood right. removed. Got some gold. And unfortunately, that does not seem to count as helping people. Or maybe I've already done it before. Oh, well. All right, well, I don't need this axe, so I'm just going to put it back where I got it. Plop. There, I wasn't kidding when I said I was going to put it back where I got it. Oh, if I remember correctly, this is kind of a weird little place right here. You think you could walk along the the water's edge, but you really can't. See, it's just, it's just weird. I have no idea if Janassa will make it around here or not, but she'll catch up. I'm just plowing right on ahead. Um, okay, if I, well, if I want to go to uh, Solitude, I need to go this way. I'm fully expected to see Janassa come rounding that corner up there. Come running down that road. Yeah, maybe she will, maybe she won't. There she is. So yeah, we have quite a few things to do here, uh, we need to go see Sybil at the Blue Palace. We need to find Nostrum and return his helmet to him. We need to go see the, um, I think it was the, uh, the Executioner asked us to do something for him. Okay, so let's, let's see if we could find these in here. We've got return Noster's helmet to Noster, tell Atar the bandit is dead. Uh, and then, is there anything else here? Oh, that's different. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Okay, so I guess this, these are the things that we need to do here in town. One of them is close by, it looks like. I'm a little busy at the moment. Got all sorts of errands to run. Okay, so here's this is Noster. Divines bless you. May the ground you walk quake as you pass. Spare some gold for a veteran. Hey, um, hold on. Before I give you your helmet, it's best you leave. did I ever like even look at it? Um, it's just called Noster's helmet. And uh, if we look at it, well, it doesn't look like there's anything terribly special about it. It's just a helmet. Can you spare a septum? Lost an eye during the Great War, or I'd earn it myself. Hey, dude, I found your helmet. Look at it. That's real Nord craftsmanship, that is. Let me show you an old trick I learned as a scout. Makes it harder for the enemy to notice you. Oh, okay, cool. Nice. Got a little bit of sneak there. Completed. Returned. Returned Noster's helmet to Noster. Yay. Sure, you make your retreat, and I'll make mine. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we did that, and now, uh, let's see, somebody in this general direction. Don't get too far ahead. <laughs> somebody here in Castle I Dower. Of the eight divines, I bid you welcome. Oh, thanks. Tell me again why I'm wasting men chasing after a fairy tale. If Ulfric gets his oh. hand on that crown, it won't Off the coast, a ways to the east, you'll It'll find the wreck of the Brinehammer. 
you never know what treasures may still be aboard. Yep. I thought the moot chose the king. Uh, we can use the arcane enchanter here. And we can't disenchant any of this stuff. Oh no, wait. I need to get it back from long enough to know that Nords aren't always sensible. And what might you need? So what? Alfred gets this crown and if that is what you wish. Uh, okay. Let's go. No, it's not as simple as that. But the jagged crown would be nope. a potent okay. symbol for his cause to rally around. But if we found it first, and we so hmm. who's here? Gave it to Ellison. In the absence of the moot, it would further legitimize her claim. Perhaps. I'm entrusting you with what resources I can spare. But I'm warning you. Keep your guard up. This turns out to be a waste of time and men. It won't be a waste. Make sure you take the auxiliary here. You can send him back when you get there and find nothing but old bones and cobwebs. The stone fist's no fool. He's found the crown. But we'll get to it first. How the heck do I get to where this person is, whoever it is I'm trying to find? Welcome back, soldier. Oh. I'm glad you made it in one piece. Oh, oh! I'll send men to garrison the fort right away. Uh oh! You did well. I'm impressed. But before we go any further, it's time for you to officially join the Legion. Speak with General Tullius. He'll administer the oath. Okay. Well, I was not anticipating that happening. Hmm. Huh. All right. I thought I would have to go talk to her, and I figured if I didn't talk to her, I'd be okay. Uh, take the oath. In joining the Legion, you'll be taking an oath binding you to the service of the Emperor, and thus to every citizen of the Empire. Are you prepared to make that commitment? Hmm, actually, I'm not sure. I need to think about it. I see. Well, the Legion will still be here when you change your mind. Rika believes in you, and I'm starting to see why. Consider this. What greater glory than to serve the Emperor and his citizens here in Skyrim, in these days of greatest need? That's it? Okay. That's it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, how do I get down there? If you need potions, ah, here we go. Here we go. Into the dungeon. I guess this is where this dude works. The executioner. That would make sense, right? You won't get anything out of me, you filthy sons of workers. I don't know if I've been down here. Atar. So Atar is the guy. He asked us to um, kill the this bandit at um, oh that's right at the leader of Orphan's Tear. Remember, uh, he um, he accidentally let somebody go free, and he asked us to take care of it. So we did. Hey, bro. You stay out of trouble now. The Castle Dower Dungeon can break even the strongest will. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be a cell sword, would you? I have a little problem you could solve. Actually, I just solved a problem for you. That's a load off my mind. Here's your pay. Twelve fifty. That's not too terrible. Okay. Keep your head about you. Got anything else you want to say to me? Huh? You've been a good friend to me. That means something. You've been a good friend to me. Just watch yourself. You don't want to meet me on the job. No, I don't. I really, really don't. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, the prisoner belongings chest, and it's interesting that there's a hole in the wall right there. Probably can get to the chest from the hole in the wall. Everything all right? Yeah, everything's great, man. Just. You know, pay a visit to this giant place. 
Holy crap, it's huge. Look at this place. Nobody in there. These are big cells. Heck, I've stayed in apartments or uh, hotels smaller than this. You won't get anything out of me, you filthy sons of workers. Who's this person? Talking. Hey, what's up? Come over here so I can talk to you. Come on, I want to talk to you. Bjartur. Come here. That's interesting. This is not showing up as a, a door that I could... See, this door I can unlock, but this one, um... I stand with the I cannot. Cloaks. You Imperial dogs will never break my will. Never! Huh. Well, I guess she doesn't want to be spoken to. I thought that maybe that would be the starting of a quest. But, uh... Used to be an apparently not. Like you. Oh! And I took an arrow in the knee. You too, huh? Well, this is kind of a neat place, really. I think it is, anyway. Ooh. The door. Oh, golly gee. We found the torture room. Oh, my. This guy's dead. You got anything interesting on him? Not really. I was mostly just... I mean, he could have had a note on him or something. You never know where you're going to find a quest. Another door. Okay. Well, I gotta eat lunch somewhere, I guess. Okay, now we need to wasting men chasing after a fairy tale. Get the heck out of this place. If Ulfric gets his hand on that crown, it won't be a fairy tale. Go fiddling with any locks around here. We're going to have a real problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, this way. We're going to go to the Blue Palace to talk to Sybil. And then I've been told in the comments that I need to speak with the... Sure. Is that... Is that Azura Star? Uh -huh. How did you we need to speak with, um... Well, whoever the leader is here. Need something? I'm faster hey, than you. you no. No, I don't. I'm very busy. Very busy. I got adult things to do. Hey, you. Thane Bryling, at your service. Be quick. I have little patience for mundane concerns. Oh, you're going to like this. I want to begin. I can always find If I needed something from you, oh. you would know it. Hey, um, I cleared out the vampires from Pine Moon Cave. Filthy creatures, aren't they? Living in the darkness like they do. So uncivilized. I prefer finery, like this. Here, for your trouble. And I suppose I should show you a little about illusion magic for free, shouldn't I? Sure, why not? Uh, illusion increased, silver amethyst ring added, and we have now told her that the vampire is dead. Take care of yourself, and always remember, the world is ripe with people looking to spill your blood. Okay. Many condemn the storm cloaks, but I refuse. There is honor in fighting for what you believe. Really? Okay. I will make the arrangements, my yarrow. It's a fine day with you around. You got that right. There's something personal I was hoping you would do for me. Really? What can I do for you, Jarl? Falk told me what you did for us at Wolfskull Cave. He says you're someone we can trust. As you may know, Talos' worship is outlawed in the Empire. When we buried my husband, I made offerings to all the gods, except Talos. I would like you to take an item of his, a warhorn handed down from his father and place it at a shrine of Talos. Hmm. Do, um, do you worship Talos? No, but my husband, Torg, would want a proper burial. And this is the way Nords are buried in Skyrim. Okay. I would be honored to help. Thank you. It would mean a lot to me. All right, a new quest. Take Torg's warhorn to the shrine of Talos for Elisif the Fair. Business, 
Fleecy Falk Firebeard, my steward. Milady. Okay, this is kind of cool. Uh, this is just a miscellaneous, though. If we look at it on the map, it's telling us that um, there's a shrine down here just just close to a Shimmer Mist Cave, Felglow Keep, right here. Uh, not far from White Run and not far from Hellyarkin Hall. Okay, well, that's where. That's the shrine we need to take it to. I remember we've seen a shrine of Talos, but I thought we saw one up north here somewhere. Uh, there's probably multiple shrines, perhaps. So we came here and we cleared out uh, several quests, several miscellaneous quests, got them off of our list, and then we picked up one new one. So that's not a bad trade off, I don't feel like. It's not bad at all, really. Um, I don't think that I have any more things to do here in um, Solitude, except for perhaps joining the Legion. And uh, I've been told that I don't have to choose, um, but um, I don't know, man. I mean, there's there's things I like about the Empire, there's things I dislike about the Empire, there's things I like about the Stormcloaks, there's things I dislike about the Stormcloaks, and uh, apparently it's a very decisive thing, decisive, divisive thing. Um, gotten comments from people who, you know, say that uh, the Empire is the good guys, and then I get comments from people saying that the Stormcloaks are the good guys. And uh, some people get pretty passionate about it. <laughs> um, so my thoughts are leaning towards joining the Empire. Um, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be real good at explaining why. Um, other than uh, the Empire did what they had to do to, I guess, make it so that an empire still exists. I mean... Suppose you'd enchant my sword. Uh -huh. Dude, I'm, I'm trying to talk here. Do you mind? Um, if the empire hadn't made the deal with the Aldmeri Dominion and the uh, Thalmor, and I hope I got that right, um, the Thalmor probably would have won the war. And there might not even be an empire left, right? So even though it's terrible that the Thalmor are here and... Um, you know, that they're dictating that they can't worship Talos anymore and the Thalmor are a bunch of dicks. Um, you know, like I just said, the, the Empire did what they had to do. Now, I also believe that there's a possibility that maybe I could try to take down the, the Thalmor from within, maybe? Uh, I think that would be harder to do on the Stormcloak side. Um... I don't know. I, I could be wrong, but I think if I get into the Empire, maybe I could... Even though the Thalmor is apparently... Well, the, the Thalmor Embassy doesn't like me, but uh, not all Thalmors hate me. Uh, if I could get in with the Empire, then maybe I could get in with the Thalmors, and maybe I could make changes that way, or maybe I could sabotage them, or something. I don't know. I just don't think I would have that opportunity with the uh, with the Stormcloaks, so... I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna join the Legion. I think that's what I'm gonna do uh, for the reasons that I just said. Um, and plus, it's right here. <laughs> so, um, this is this is the the story that I'm deciding to follow. And um, yeah, there you there you have it. Uh, this is a game that could be played uh, many times in many different ways, and. Uh, I barely have enough time to play it once, so unfortunately, uh, I won't get to um, see what would happen if I instead joined the, the Stormcloaks, and I and I won't get to see what would happen if I um, did neither, if I joined neither. But in this playthrough, we're going to see what happens when I join the Empire. Uh, I apologize to those of you who don't want me to join the Empire, uh, who think the Empire is evil. That's cool. That's totally fine. You might be right. Um, How can I help a brother Nord? But uh, this is this is what I'm doing in this playthrough. Tell me again why I'm wasting men chasing after a fairy tale. Okay, Tullius. You can sell off that junk. Shut up. Changed your mind. Decided you want to soldier for the Empire after all. Yes. 
I'm ready to take the oath. He looks a little bit like George Clooney. Well then, repeat after me. Upon my honor, I do swear undying loyalty to the Emperor Titus Mead II. Upon my honor, I do swear undying loyalty to the Empire Titus Mead II. And unwavering obedience to the officers of his great empire. And unwavering obedience to the officers of his great empire. May those above judge me, and those below take me, if I fail in my duty. May those above judge me, and those below take me, if I fail in my duty. Long live the Emperor. Long live the Empire. Long live the Emperor. Long live the Empire. Welcome to the Imperial Legion, soldier. Just remember, we take care of our own. Once you're in the Legion, you're in it for life. Speak to Baron. He's normally out by the forge. Mm. He'll get you outfitted. Cool, we're gonna get outfitted. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Legate Ricca has a special assignment for you. Okay, we have now joined the Legion. We've taken a side. Get the Imperial gear from Baron, and uh, we failed at joining the Stormcloak Rebellion. That's funny. <laughs> that we did. Yes, indeed. Started the Jagged Crown. Talk to Legate Ricca. Okay, that is what we're going to do. Don't you Nords put any stock in your own traditions? I thought the Moot chose the king. They have the same conversation every time I come in here. Get our gear from Birend. And then this quest here, the Jagged Crown. I've decided to join the Imperial Legion in its fight to preserve the Empire. I should talk to Legate Ricca to get my first assignment. Don't you Nords put we're any stock in, in your own traditions? Welcome to the Legion, Auxiliary. The Listen up. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's agreed to the Moot. You've been here long enough to know that Nords aren't always sensible. We follow our hearts. So what? Ulfric gets this crown and then suddenly he's High King? No, it's not as simple as that. But the Jagged Crown would be a potent symbol for his cause to rally around. But if we found it first... And we gave it to Elisif. In the absence of the moot, it would further legitimize her claim. Perhaps. I'm entrusting you with what resources I can spare, but I'm warning you, if this turns out to be a waste of time and men... It won't be a waste. Make sure you take the auxiliary here. You can send him back when you get there and find nothing but old bones and cobwebs. <laughs> the Stone Fist's no fool. He's found the crown, but we'll get to it first. Okay. Oh. Welcome to the Legion, Auxiliary. Listen up. Ulfric's right-hand man, Galmar Stonefist, has located what he believes is the final resting place of the Jagged Crown. We're going to make sure he doesn't get his hands on it. The rest of my men are already assembling outside Corvinjun. I'll meet you there as soon as I finish up here. Corvinjun, huh? Now that's a place I don't think we've been to. So, um, what is this Jagged Crown, anyway? A legendary crown, dating back to King Harald's time, or before. A powerful relic of the Golden Age, long since past. Legend has it that the crown is made from the bones and teeth of ancient dragons, and is said to increase the power of the wearer. Whatever the truth, if Ulfric gets his hands on it, it would be a powerful symbol around which to rally support for his cause. Well, how do we know that the crown is in Corvinund? Well, to be frank, we don't. Its location was lost with King Borgus when the Great Hunt killed him off while on his Leshen campaigns. Supposedly, his body was brought back to Skyrim and secretly buried with the crown. Knowledge of that location was lost in the Wars of Secession. But my agents report that Galmar is pretty damn convinced Corvin June is the tomb of King Borgus. I know Galmar. We fought in many wars together. He's not a sentimental man taken to fancy. If he believes the crown is there, he's likely found it. Okay. Um, changing subjects, why do you fight for the Empire? I am a loyal citizen of the Empire. My parents were legionnaires, and I followed in their footsteps. But more importantly, I am a daughter of Skyrim, and wish to see her made whole again. Oh, hmm. Interesting. Don't Stormcloaks call themselves sons and daughters of Skyrim? 
I've been a daughter of Skyrim all my life. I love this land and her people. So do all the Nords that serve the Empire. Ulfric, too, once. He wasn't always a self-serving egomaniac. He fought in the Imperial Army in the war against the Dominion. But Ulfric and his Stormcloaks are deluding themselves. If there's any hope of a long-term victory against the Dominion, it's in the Empire. The Rebels are only inflaming the tension and weakening the Empire by distracting it from its ultimate aim. Hmm. So do you, um, well, let's ask her this. You have no problem with the treaty that bans the worship of Talos? I'm a soldier, not a politician. And my personal <laughs> beliefs are not yours to question. Damn, sorry I asked. Uh, I want to go back to this question because I want to ask her if she thinks that the Talmor, the Thalmor are an, an enemy. I, but more importantly, I am a daughter of Sky. I've been a daughter of Ulfric, but Ulf, the rebels are only inflamed. Yeah, right here. Do you consider the Thalmor enemies? I consider this conversation over. Oh my. Okay then. <laughs> really? March is an important buffer zone between the rebel forces and the capital. Ulfric will try to break through at some point. Okay. So she has given us a quest uh, that, sa that says, um, My first assignment is to help Legget Ricca recover the jagged crown from the ruins of Corvenjund. Uh, let's see where that is on the map. That is uh, right here. Hmm. Interesting. It is um, very close to Helyarkin Hall. It is a place that we've walked by, apparently, but uh, never got close enough to. Okay, that is interesting, and that will f probably fit in nicely with bringing uh, that thing uh, to the uh, Talos Shrine there. So that's that's surprising to me that it's there. I thought for sure it was going to be either way over here or way down by Riften. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I am going to uh, have a seat here. Just relax a little bit, uh, take a load off, and as I do at the end of every episode, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read a book. That's what I'm gonna do. And uh, at the end of this episode, we are going to read Myths of Shiagarath by Mimophonus. Sure. Shiagarath invents music. In the earliest of days, in a time when the world was still raw, Shiagarath decided to walk amongst the mortals. He donned his guise of gentleman with a cane and moved from place to place without being recognized. After eleven days and eleven nights, Shiagarath decided that life among mortals was even more boring than his otherworldly existence. What can I do to make their lives more interesting, he said to himself. At that same moment, a young woman nearby commented wistfully to herself, The sounds of the birds are so beautiful. Shiagarath silently agreed with her. Mortals could not make the beautiful and inspired calls of birds. Their voices were wretched and mundane. He could not change the nature of mortals, for that was the purview of other Daedric princes. However, he could give them tools to make beautiful sounds. Shiagareth took hold of the petulant woman and ripped her asunder. <laughs> From her tendons he made lutes. From her skull and arm bones he made a drum. From her bones he made flutes. He presented these gifts to the mortals, and thus music was born. <laughs> That's pretty good. Shiagareth and King Lyander. King Lyander was known to be an exceedingly rational man. He lived in a palace that was a small, simple structure, unadorned with art and ugly to look upon. I do not need more than this, he would say. Why spend my gold on such luxuries when I can spend it on my armies or on great public works? His kingdom prospered under his sensible rule. However, the people did not always share the king's sense of practicality. They would build houses that were beautiful to look upon, although not necessarily very practical. They, voted, they devoted time and energy to works of art. They would celebrate events with lavish festivals. In general, they were quite happy. King Lyander was disappointed that more of them did not follow his example and lead frugal, sensible lives. He brooded on this for many years. Finally, he decided that his subjects simply didn't understand how much more they could accomplish if they didn't waste time on those frivolous activities. Perhaps, he reasoned, they just needed more examples. The king decreed that all new buildings must be simple, unadorned, 
and no larger than was necessary for their function. The people were not happy about this, but they liked their king and respected the new law. In a few short years, there were more plain buildings than ornate ones. The citizens used the money saved to make and buy even more lavish art and hold even more excessive celebrations. Once again, King Lander decided to provide them a strict example of how beneficial it would be to use their time and resources for more practical purposes. He banned all works of art in the city. The people were quite put out by this, but they knew that their king was doing what he thought was best for them. However, human nature is not so easily denied. In a few more years, the city was filled with plain, simple buildings and devoid of any sort of art. However, the people now had even more money and time to devote to their parties and festivals. With a heavy heart, King Lander decided that his people were to be treated like children. And like all children, they needed rules and discipline laid down by great figures of authority to make them understand what was truly important in life. He decided there, that there should be no revelry in the city. Singing, dancing, and music were all banned. Even food and drink were limited to water and simple foodstuffs. The people had had enough. Revolt was out of the question since King, Lion King Lyander had a very well-trained and equipped army. They visited the shrines and temples in droves, praying to all the gods and even to some of the Daedric princes, that King Lyander would revoke these new oppressive laws. Shiagarath heard their pleas and decided to visit King Lyander. He appeared to the king in his dreams as a field of flowers, each with arms instead of petals, and the face of the mad god in the center. I am lord of the creative and lord of the deranged. Since you have no use for my gifts of creativity, I have decided to bless you with an abundance of my other gift. From that day forward, every child born in the city was born into madness. Since infants do not reveal illnesses of the mind, it was several years before this was realized. The king's own son was among the victims, suffering from seizures and delusions. Yet King Lyander refused to change his ways. When his son Glint was twelve years old, he stabbed his father while Lyander was sleeping. With his dying breath, King Lyander asked why. His son replied, It is the most practical thing I could do. The new young king ordered all the palace servants slaughtered. He ordered a grand festival to celebrate his new reign and the repeal of Lyander's laws. He served the crowds a stew made from the carcasses of the palace servants. He ordered the east wing the east-facing walls of every building painted red, and the west-facing walls painted in stripes. He decreed that all citizens wear ornate masks on the back of their heads. He then burned down the palace and began the construction of a new one. In the new palace, the young king ordered his personal chambers to not have any doors for fear that small woodland creatures would attack him. He ordered that it have no windows for fear that the sun and moon were jealous of him and plotting his death. And thus ended the line of King Lyander. The people of the city returned to their grand works of art and raucous celebrations. They talked and acted as if they still had a living king and even kept up the palace using it to house and care for their mad children. Shiagarath was mightily pleased with this outcome. From that day forward, the city was blessed with more than the normal number of gifted artists and deranged citizens. The Contest of Wills A mighty wizard named Ravit once walked the winds of time to find Lord Shiagarath. His intent was to win a favor from this most capricious, capricious of the Daedric princes. Upon finding Shiagarath, Ravit spoke humbly to him. Lord Shiagarath, I beg a favor of you. I would gladly drive a thousand men mad in your name if you would but grant me the greater magical powers. Fortunately for Ravit, Shiagarath was in a playful mood. He proposed a game. I will grant your wish if you are still sane in three days. During that time, I will do my utmost to drive you mad. It shall be great fun. Ravit was not so certain that he'd liked this new deal. He had been really looking forward to driving a thousand men mad. Lord Shiagarath, I regret having disturbed you with my shallow, selfish, re selfish request. I withdraw my unfortunate plea and will humbly leave this place. Shiagarath just laughed. Too late, mighty rabbit. The game is afoot, and you must play. 
Ravit fled, only to find that all exits from the Daedric realm were now sealed. He wandered aimlessly, constantly looking over his shoulder, jumping at every noise. Each moment brought new terror as he waited for Shiagarath to begin. After three days, Ravit was convinced that every plant and animal was a tool of Shiagarath. He hadn't eaten or drunk for fear that Shiagarath had poisoned the food or drink. He hadn't slept for fear of Shiagarath invading his dreams, which was foolish as, foolish as dreams are the domain of Vermina. May she grant us restful sleep. It was then that Shiagarath appeared to him. Ravit cried out, You have set the whole world to watching me. Every creature and plant are doing your bidding to drive me mad. Shiagarath replied, Actually, I have done nothing. You have driven yourself mad with your fears. Your delusions prove that you are truly deranged, and therefore I win. While you wanted to make a thousand men mad, I only wanted to break one man's mind, yours. From that day forward, Ravit served Shiagarath's every whim. Whenever daring travelers try to approach Shiagarath, Ravit warns them, Shiagarath is already inside each of us. You have already lost. And that is the book called The Myths of Shiagarath. I hope you enjoyed that book, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I hope those of you who are Stormcloak fans aren't too upset that I joined the Empire. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I sure hope you join me again in the next episode.